So in this video I'm going to be going over using sources and effects to create multiple layers of text and objects for things like lower thirds. So under the sources tab there is a text block, I'm sure most of you have seen this before, and it's a great way of getting text into your composition. Side note, sometimes some fonts do show up garbled like this. If you change the font face to something else it normally fixes this problem. So almost anything else will do. See this one's a bit, a bit messed up as well. Something basic should be fine. So I just use this text for adding like lower thirds or names over a composition. If I wanted to have multiple sections of text, I used to use multiple layers and this ends up eating through a lot of layers very quickly. An easier way and a way of getting multiple text blocks all together is by using them as an effect. In fact, a lot of your, t a lot of your sources actually show up in the effects pool as well. So I search for text in here. We have another text block and we can stack that straight on top of the one that's already there. Again, change that font face to something else. And now we have two sections of text in different fonts that we can change. As a whole clip, that can be moved around using the layer trans uh, clip transform as a whole, making sure that the transform is after that effect in the pipeline. So this is very simple. It means we have a whole lot of text all in one clip. We can transfer them. We can animate them in and out together. So let's look at turning this into a lower thirds. I'll clear that for now. And let's use a simple shape generator. Shaper. And we'll make that into a shape one, into a rectangle. Again, on that note, shape also appears in here again as a, t as a separate effect that can be added into it. So you can add multiple shapes into one clip again to create a more complex object. Let's adjust this. Uh, we'll adjust the ratio. If you hold down the Alt key, it gives you a fine tuning on that. We just want a, a long text box, so a long rectangle to fit our text in. So we'll make that quite wide into ratio and reduce the size down. And let's move that position off to the side in kind of a lower thirds position. Uh, we could adjust the shape however we want. Um, but just leave it how it is for now. And what I want to add is some text into this. We'll adjust that ratio a little bit more, make it a little bit longer. Reduce that size down. And maybe want that a little bit transparent. There we go. So now we want to have two lines of text in here. We'll have like a, a heading or a title and then a subtitle. So from the effects pool, I'll search for text block again. I'll drag that in. Let's choose a font. Anything should be fine. I was just a color that's going to stand out against everything at the moment. Green. Uh, we want the text starting on the left hand side always and filling out from there. Right, right now it's a center alignment, which means if the text gets too long, it can go off the page. So we'll start alignment left and go from there. So we'll shift off the x-axis and drop it down the y. That was like a good starting position. We'll make that text black. In Resolum 7 or Arena, we can rename our layers, which makes it very easy to navigate. So we'll call that title and we'll add another text block, which we will rename to subtitle. Again, choose another font. Align that to the left. We want this one to be maybe half the size, so 0 0.5. Position X. We'll offset it, indent it a little bit, and down from there. 
And let's make that a, a black also. So let's just dump some placeholder text into that subtitle. Something small. And there's the lower thirds. So right now that jumps in. Let's update that thumbnail. So thumbnail update. So it matches. We can make that animate in. So we'll set a, a transition time on that. Right now it fades in. We could do a push left or right. So let's push it right, which means it's just going to slide in, in from the right and out. Unfortunately, you can't have it in and out from the same side. You'd have to keep changing this transition. And now I can copy these over, and these can be our lower thirds. So this next one, the title. Mr. One. Next one could be Mrs. Two. Whoops, that was in the subtext. And now I can easily switch between lower thirds anywhere along here and click on anyone to fade it all the way out. So it's a very quick way of making lower thirds that are easily customizable in Resolume. You can adjust them as needed. These could then appear anywhere. You could have another one that appears up higher. You can maybe adjust them to suit. But let's look at using some pre-animated backgrounds. So I've got this one here which is a very simple in animation. we we'll change our tra layer transition back. Animates in and then stays there. So if we want to add some text to this, rather than building this in an external program and having to render out every single lower thirds for a person and not having the ability to change on the fly, we can do it in Resolume and add the text to this. It won't be as clean, but it does give us a lot more control on the fly. So back in this, we'll pause that. Let's find an out point for when that's finished animating. So it bounces in and it's done about there. So let's set the ending to 1.20 should be enough. So we'll play there, play and hold. So it'll bounce, animate in. Let's add a text block to that. Change the font. Again, I'll make sure we're starting the alignment from the left. That's too big already. Let's bring the size down to 0.7. Just make an obvious color. So we're going to move it over this white section here. So move that over and move it down. Move a bit more. And now let's make it black. All right. Right now that text is staying there the whole time. So we want to find an in point. And we just want it to. Uh, we'll, we'll animate the opacity, so it can start, we'll pause where we want it to start, so we want it to start, it can start, maybe it can fade in from there. So we're going to animate this to clip position. So it's going to animate the opacity following the clip position. That's not quite right, so to fine tune that, we'll add an envelope. And we can set where we want to start and disappear, so we want it to appear About here it can be finished. So that's that point there. Click that and I'll add that. It needs to be full by then. And it can start fading in maybe there. So we'll click there and drag down. Holding shift locks the position. So we're stuck in that position. So it's not sliding all over the place. And now it fades in with the clip. So we'll set that to play properly, bounce and fade. Resolume's a bit short, let's say this is a name or something longer. My, my very long name. Everything looks like it's contained quite nicely. I'll play the clip again. And now that stops and we're stuck on that frame loaded in. I'll grab a new thumbnail for safety. Um, let's make it animate out. Very simple. All we're doing is just reversing the way that layer plays. So in, 
it'll stay there and out. I'd probably either color code those, so maybe a green for an in, a pink for an out. We could have multiple of those, so. Again, it's a bit cumbersome having multiple clips, but it does give us that nice animation. And you could use anything as a background. There might be a continuous animation that keeps happening in here that you have to loop afterwards, um, but it gives you much more dynamic lower thirds, and you do not have, it saves a lot of render time. I hate having to render out multiple, multiple lower thirds for all sorts of things. I need to find out someone's name spelled wrong and we have to redo it anyway. There you go. That's how you stack multiple clips or multiple effects as sources.